Its face is as white as snow. You must turn it over to the police to try to keep it in raisin would never do. It's a white child, I tell you. Wonder what's the matter with her? Why does she act like that? Because she's stuck up and don't to be colored. Well, I never. Oh, hello. Hello. My mama sent me to school. I've never been and don't know the way. If you'll show me, I'll give you this big red apple. Oh, sure. We'll take you there with us. Oh, thank you. I'm a stranger, but I've been sent to you. I was told that you were a good, kind woman who would listen to my story with me and try to understand. Yes? My baby's starving. I'm hungry, too. I'm going to the city to try to find work, and I want you to keep her until I return. But I... Uh, I know. You're going to ask me why I don't live with some of my friends. But there's a reason. A reason I don't wish to go into. But I beg of you, Mrs. Saunders. Please keep her. She's really a darling child. Goodbye, Mrs. Saunders. Goodbye? But what about your baby? The child is yours. I am leaving and I will never return. May God bless you and take good care of my child. Poor little darling. Now you can run along to school, be a nice little girl, don't annoy the teacher, give her this. Now don't play with any bad children and come directly home as soon as school is out.
do, Mrs. Cushenberry? I came for my little girl, Naomi. I started her to school today. Did you send her home with one of the other children? Why, no, Mrs. Saunders. I haven't seen Naomi. Although I was expecting her today. When you didn't send her, I thought you decided not to send her yet. You haven't seen Naomi? Why, I brought her here this morning myself. When I... I remember you saying that you were going to send her to me again this year, and I was expecting her. But I haven't seen her yet. Well, this beats me. Oh, how that child worries me. She's so peculiar until I've taught her at home for the past two years, when she should have been coming to you. Mm. She's nine now. And I thought it was about time she started mixing with other children. Well, suppose something should happen to her. Mrs. Cushenberry, I'm afraid. Afraid something has happened. I must find Naomi. I'll go with you and help. Oh, look! Here comes her mother and the teacher. I bet they're looking for Naomi. How do you do, little girl? Why are you stopping here? Haven't I always told you to go directly home when school is out? Then why do you stop to play? Now, don't make excuses or tell me a story. We aren't making any excuses or telling a story. We stopped to talk to these other girls and Naomi, but... Naomi? Naomi? Have, Have you, you seen, seen Naomi? Naomi? What's the matter? What's the matter, huh? She needs a good licking, that's what's the matter. And if you don't want to give it to her, turn it over to me and I will. what she needs, a good spanking. Go away, Jimmy. You don't understand girls. Can't you see Naomi's unhappy? Of course I see it. But why? Don't you know why? Then I'll tell you. Oh, Mommy, please make him go away. Please make him go away. Well, I'll go. But if Ma's so dumb, she ought to know what's the matter with you. Everybody else does. You just don't want to be colored, that's all. Take yourself right out of here, young man. You can't abuse your sister when she's heartbroken like this. Get right out of here. If you'd break her head, she may get these notions out of it. Why do you let her fool you? She deliberately slipped off and went to a white school. That's what she did. I don't believe him, Mother. Don't believe a word he says. Jimmy don't like me because I'm a girl. He never did like girls. Oh, I'm so unhappy. All right. Naomi, why did you do it? I didn't, teacher. It was... Don't make it worse by telling the story. Please don't do that. I saw the whole thing from the window. I saw just what you did. Otherwise, I wouldn't have believed it of you. I'm sorry you did it. For the principal says I must punish you for it. And I hate to do that. I hate to. But you're a bad girl and must be punished. I seldom have to punish any of the children, Naomi. You know that. I talk to them, try to reason it out together. And I'm going to try to reason this out with you. You're a pretty girl. And I'm sure you wouldn't want to be the first child I've got to punish this year. You wouldn't want that to happen, would you, Naomi? It isn't going to happen. Why, Naomi? What do you mean? Just what I say. You better not lay your hands on me. My, Naomi, you're getting worse. This will never do. If you hadn't been disobedient and unruly, it wouldn't be necessary. I'm afraid I'll have to punish you, and severely. Just try it! I had hoped that I could talk to you, reason with you. 
I thought that I could persuade you to see that it is nicer to be nice, sweet, and kind to your playmates instead of haughty, insolent, and downright mean. I thought I could persuade you to obey me. I won't obey you and I won't try to be nice. I don't want to come to this old school and I never did. I don't like you and I don't like any of the children. And I'm here only because my mama made me come. <coughs> Good evening, Mrs. Saunders. Oh, it's you, teacher. How are you? Come in. Thank you. I'm certainly glad to see you, dear. So nice of you to stop by tonight. It's a surprise, but a pleasant one. I'm not going to stay that long, dear. I, uh... My dear, you look sad and worried and all upset. What's the matter? But come in far and tell me. She's sound asleep. Didn't hear anything. Doesn't even know you've been here. But I... Then everything is all right. That's fine. Please don't worry anymore, dear. I must go now. Naomi, what in the world are you doing awake and out of bed? Shh, someone might hear. I'll come down there. Quiet, Mother, but it's awful, awful. Awful? What do you mean, child? What's awful? Shh, not so loud. Let's not awaken Jimmy. Come with me upstairs and I'll tell you. I've got to tell you. I overheard you talking to the teacher, Mommy. I know you thought I was asleep. But what happened was so, oh, terrible, until I couldn't sleep. I was so worried, but I had to make out like I was. So you would understand that it was best she didn't know I overheard. Whatever are you talking about, Naomi? What the teacher was afraid to tell you about what happened. What happened anyhow? The teacher started to tell me something. But when she found out you hadn't told me, then she wouldn't tell me. Oh, this is all so confusing. Why not tell me and have it over with? I'm going to tell you, Mommy. Tell you the whole story. But I warn you, it's terrible, terrible. I can guess. You were a bad girl in school this afternoon. The teacher had to punish you and came here to tell me about it tonight. And... Oh, Mommy, no, not that. When she learned you hadn't told me anything about it, she didn't want me to know you'd been a bad girl, so she decided not to tell me. Oh, Mommy, no, not that at all. It was something else. Oh, something entirely different. And it was not about me. It was about the teacher. About the teacher? What do you mean? I started to tell you just what happened, but what happened this afternoon was only a part of it. If you let me tell you, we'll get to that in time. Go on. I'm listening. But this sounds like some tale out of a fairy book to me, or the story of a nightmare. Mommy, it's the teacher that's bad. She's a bad woman. Heaven help us. Whatever you talking about, Naomi? The teacher bad. I knew you wouldn't believe it. That's why I hesitated to tell you. Nevertheless, she's a bad woman. Naomi, I don't understand at all. I love you. And I want you to be happy. You know that, don't you? Then why don't you tell me the truth? I'll bet the teacher had to punish you this afternoon, just as I said. But you've trumped up this story to tell me, and I won't believe a word of it. That's final. Oh, Mommy, I'm telling the truth. Please believe me. I'm telling the truth. I'm telling the truth. Oh, Mommy, it's so awful. 
Listen to me, Naomi. I raised you, and I know you better than anybody else in the world. And I know your teacher, too. Now, this story you've made up to tell me, I don't believe a word of it. And if you don't go right back to bed, I'm going to give you another spanking. <sighs> oh, you don't love me. You never did love me. Nobody loves me. I wish I was dead, dead. Would you stop that noise and go back to bed? You'll awaken Jimmy and... I'm awake already. I've been awake, listening to Naomi. Why, Jimmy, how dare you? I'm surprised at you. Why? <laughs> you stay right where you are, Naomi. I'm coming down here and tell Mom what really happened to school this afternoon. He's lying, Mother, he's lying. Don't believe him. Don't believe a word he says. Oh, no, you don't. You're not going to get out of this. You know what happened, which was that you... I'm sorry, Naomi, but everything has been done to keep you from doing mean things and hurting other people. Now, there's no need for you to scream and cry any longer. You must be punished, and I'm... Oh, Mommy, please don't whip me. I'm sore already from the spanking teacher gave me this afternoon. Please don't whip me again, Mommy. So, I was right. The teacher did punish you this afternoon and came here tonight to tell me she was sorry she had to punish you. Is that true? And was that all you did to make the teacher punish you? You're holding something back, Naomi. What else did you do? It, that was all, honestly, Mommy. I didn't do anything else. I just happened to. Just happened to what? A cough and... No, Naomi. You didn't just happen to cough. You simply spit in the teacher's face. Well, that settles it. I don't know what'll become of you when you grow up. But I'm going to give you a whipping now that you'll never forget if I have to send you to the hospital when I get through. Oh, Mommy, Mommy, Mommy! I'm sorry, Naomi. Lord knows it hurts me to have to punish you. But you've got to behave yourself and stop being so mean. You've got to. Oh, Mommy, please! Please, Mama, let her go this time. Maybe she'll do better. Give her one more chance, please. Just one more chance. I'm sorry, Jenny. But Naomi seems to be hopelessly mean and unruly. I'm afraid she'll never come to any good end. But it's her mother's duty to try to make her do what's right. I'm sorry, son. But I must punish her. you in on a secret. Ain't that awful? It's a shame. And remember, we promise not to tell anybody. No, no we, we won't, won't tell, tell anybody. anybody.
come with me. this way seems like a sort of committee. They're headed here. And to see you. I'm going to follow that committee, son. I'll have to spike the lie there and come back and hush it down here. <laughs> to think that child would start all this. I believe she's marked. By the way, son, if she comes home, don't let her go away. Keep her here until I come back. Yes, sir. I respect your desire to keep your school free from the scandal. But has it ever occurred that you might be mistaken, that the accused might be innocent? Who started this rumor, anyhow? There ain't no rumor. How do you know? Somebody told you, and somebody else told those who told you. Now, let me remind you that these two people, up to the last two hours, have been highly respected and honored by all who know them, and may yet be innocent. I'm not going to discharge them before they have been heard. I'm sorry, but... Uh, Thank you, Mr. Rankin. You all must excuse me for coming here like this, but I know what this is all about, and I've come to set you right, all of you. Mrs. Cushenberry and the principal have done no wrong. Somebody has told a terrible story on them. How do you know it's a story, Sister Saunders? What proof have you? And how do you know that it wasn't a story? Have you any proof for that? No proof at all. Simply a rumor. Started by a child. My own child. God help me. Yes, my own little Naomi. You see, it was like this. The teacher had to punish her in school yesterday. When she came home, I punished her again. Today, she started this terrible story. <laughs> Her. Give her love. All your love. Thank you, Mrs. Cushenberry. You are a good Christian woman.
with your story, Jimmy. I'm very interested. Are you really? You know I am. I've always been interested in you. I know it. Well, I'd just like to hear you say it now and then. I'll say it as often as you want me to. We seem to understand each other so much. Don't you think so, Jimmy? Ever since we were kids. We should always understand each other, Eva, and trust each other. That's what counts the most, trusting each other. I think it's beautiful. I even picture myself getting into some strange difficulty and to be accused. Then to have you stand up for me, against all of faithfully. That's Les Santa who cares and watch this number. He's a splendid dancer. <laughs> love me as much as I do you, dear. If that be possible, yes. It seems we must have been born in love with each other, Jimmy. We were. That brings me back to what I started to tell you a few minutes ago. So let's go somewhere and talk it over. My Jimmy. Eva. Shall we go inside or? This will do. It's so cool and restful out here. It is, really. Well, where shall I start? At the beginning. Oh, no, Precious, that would take too long. I'm patient. I'll listen to every word, even if it takes you all night to tell me. Well, it was like this. I got a job as a Pullman porter running on the road. I was lucky, as we Negroes put it. I saved the money I made, got a few breaks. Now I have exactly six or $700. Mm. So now I'm ready for my big try in life. I guess I'll perhaps lose it. Never be able to save that much again. Never have so much again. Oh, Jimmy, you must be very careful. To lose it, that would never do. It would be a calamity. I'll be careful, but I wouldn't have to take some kind of a chance. You won't do what they're saying you're going to, will you, Jimmy? What's that, dear? Go into that gambling deal. Good heavens, no. I understand what you mean now. That chain of policy shops all over the country. Lord, help me know. Another outfit has been trying to interest me in a string of crab games in a dozen cities. While another talks of banks, numbers banks. Nothing doing. Nick's on all. I'm so glad to know you're not, dear. Why is it that so many, most all of our men, when they go into business, it's got to be a crap game, a numbers bank, or a policy shop? Why can't they go into some kind of legitimate business like white people? They could, but they've made no study of economics. Their idea of success is to seek the line of least resistance. The Negro hates to think. He's a stranger to planning. I guess you're right. I guess I think too much, and plan too much also. But after viewing the failure of our group, for we are failures, it seems that we should go right back to the beginning and start all over again. And that's what I've decided to do. You mean? That I'm going to buy a farm and start at the beginning. Shh, somebody's coming. Is that Aunt True Crowther? Evening, folks. Excuse me for butting in on you young folks like this, but I just had to see and talk to Jimmy about this big deal. We were just talking about it, Mr. Copper. Now sit here with Mr. Saunders, and if you'll excuse me, I'll... Wait a minute. If I guess correctly, I think you should sit in on the details, Eve. I think it's clear to everybody around here about you two. And as a businessman, I think you should sit in. How about it, Jimmy? 
Okay by me. That's fine. Fine. As I was telling you, I was in New York, Philadelphia, Baltimore, and Washington. Pittsburgh, Cleveland, Detroit, and Chicago. In the East, it's all numbers. But the white man has got the Negro pretty badly squares out. But in Cleveland, Detroit, Chicago, and St. Louis, the Negro is holding his own. He has most of the crap games, the policy wheels, and the outright gambling houses. The towns are wide open. Uh, of course, you have to split with the police. And he is cleaning up. Now, with Jimmy's money in my brain... But what gave you the idea that I want to go into gambling business, copper? I've never given you any reason to feel that I'm even remotely interested. You ain't what? I'm not interested, copper. And I've never given you any reason to feel that I would be, have I? Well, no, I can't say you have. But I thought, when I told you how much money that was in it, quick money and easy money, and the Negro is so simple and falls for any kind of game that... I understand what you may have thought, copper, and I'm not faulting you for coming to me. But you leave out one very important thing in your summing up. That the games you mentioned are despisable. A cheap racket that's doing more to drag the Negro down than anything ever conceived. Well, that may be true. But he's going to get rid of his money any ways it goes as I see it. And we just as well to be getting some of it as the other fella. I agree with you. But Copper, we don't think the same way. I hate all these cheap rackets that have submerged the Negro and to the helpless creatures they are. And so far as I'm concerned, I wouldn't be a party to it if it was possible to make a million dollars. All clear. That's what I think of it. I'm sorry. Taint you, brother. It's me. You done let me down. Way down. As fine a farm as ever laid out of doors. Country's coming back. You pay five thousand dollars down and take the farm. You can pay five thousand a year uh, if you make it. If not, just pay the interest and the taxes. If I was a gambler, I'd lay a bet with the sense you've got and the way you go after things that you'll have it paid for in ten years or less. And before you get it paid for, it'll be worth one hundred and fifty thousand dollars again. Well, I'll think about it. You mean to say that this guy ain't willing to fall for an opportunity like we offer him? Not a chance. He don't like to rack it. He says if it was left to him, he'd wipe out every number bank and policy wheel in the country. He says that it has ruined the Negro's chance for salvation. Oh, a preacher, huh? A reformer. I like to take a pull at his pretty nose. I can it. We had him scheduled for right now because he don't step into our trap. Why I get so about it? Come on, let's get going. Oh, well, I guess you're right. Well, Mother, here it is, our future home, where your son is going on set, or fail, as the case may be. Our future home. This is more than I expected. You'll succeed, Jimmy. You're a silver boy. When you do take advice, take the right kind. You'll make mistakes, maybe a lot of them. Learn to labor and wait, son. I know you will. Yes, Mother, I'm driving to John's town. back until late tonight. You'll see that everything's attended to as I lay down, please. So long, dear. Goodbye, dear. Get back. Baby. 
baby. My darling baby, you've come back to me. Oh, Mommy, Mommy. I'm so happy. Now, come in, darling. Sit down and tell me everything. Give me your coat, dear. I'll be right back. Oh, Mommy, what a beautiful home. I'm so glad you like it, dear. Now sit there, darling. Now tell Mother everything. Oh, darling, but there isn't anything to tell Mother. What could happen there in a convent that would interest anybody? But we can talk about you and Jimmy. Oh, Mommy, he's a grown man now, and I'll bet he's handsome, isn't he? Jimmy? Handsome? Oh, yes, 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 of course, dear. Yes, I must admit, your brother is handsome. Oh, gee, isn't that wonderful? Wonderful. I know I'm going to love him a lot. Going to love him? Why, he's your brother, dear. You mean you're going to love him more. You've always loved him, of course. Of course. That's a sweet child. Your brother's a fine young man and is eating in a big way. But he's very serious. You to love each other dearly. It will make me very happy. But Jimmy, Mommy, where is he? Well, I'm so anxious to see him. Now, darling, be patient. If you had let us know what day you would leave the school, I would have had Jimmy come for you. No, no, Mother. I didn't want you to come there. Oh, you don't know what I went through to stay there all these years. It all but killed me. Now that I am out, I never want to see the place again. Never, never. I know, dear. It must have been confining to you. But uh, weren't the sisters good to you? Yes, dear. Every one of them. And I love them. I shall always love them. But, oh, Mommy, I wanted to be outside, free and... Of course, Naomi, but... I was a bad girl, Mommy. I sinned. I had to be confined. I had to be disciplined. I had to be subdued. Yes, it's all true. And I deserved it. I'm sorry that I was now. But I'm going to make up for it all by being good. Just as good as I can be. I know you'll be good, baby. Mother's baby. Just as good as you can be. As good as she... Oh, you're back, son. Now, why aren't you in bed? You know I don't like you staying up, even for me, when I know you should be asleep. I had to stay up tonight, son. There's a good reason. Reason? Why, well, what do you mean? Oh, be patient, Jenny, and come with me. Now, give me your coat and hat, son. It's Naomi, son. Your little sister grown up. Isn't she beautiful and sweet? Why, Jimmy, you act like you're frightened. It's Naomi, your little sister, grown up, out of school, and home again with us. Naomi. Jimmy. Jimmy. Well. I never saw such a meeting between brother and sister. You're acting more like two long-lost lovers. Go ahead, boy. Take her in your arms and kiss her. Can't you see what she needs? Well, have you forgotten your mother? I... If you two weren't brother and sister, I'd be... Oh, well, I won't say it. Jimmy, Naomi wanted to surprise us. That's why she didn't tell us she was coming home. Now I'm going to leave you two to get better acquainted while I go and prepare some dinner for you.
Now, Jimmy, I want you to take Naomi to the city and keep her there over the weekend. Remember, dear, she's young and has seen almost nothing of life. Be nice to her. Monday is a holiday, so you can both relax and have a good time in the city for four days. There, there, Mother. We're all right now. We'll be rolling along. Bye-bye, Mommy, dear. We'll be home Tuesday. Goodbye, darling. She looked just like an angel, and she wasn't looking at anybody but your Jimmy. There, there, Aunt Carrie. The girl's been in a convent for over 12 years. She was due to come out this month, and I'm sure the girl you're talking about must be her. Excuse me, Aunt Carrie. Eva. Jimmy. Eva, this is... Naomi. Oh, I'm so glad to see you again. Do you remember me? How could I ever forget you, Eva? You're a darling. Oh, Naomi. Now, come into the parlor. I want you to meet my aunt. It's a strange coincidence, but we were just talking about you. Both of you.
one party. Three girls and one fella. Well, Eva, he's yours, so you take him. Oh, no, Naomi, you go. You see, you haven't had any chance to dance with men where you've been. So we bow to you. Go ahead. that you started to tell me about Jimmy and the girl not being real brother and sister? Jimmy's mother adopted Naomi when she was a baby and has raised her as Jimmy's sister. I don't think they hardly know they're not real brother and sister. He may not, but she does. Oh, Aunt Karen, you shouldn't say that. How did you learn to dance? Sister told us. Oh, really? You do well. What did you do for men? Oh, there were no men, silly. How could there be? I suppose you're right. I guess I'll have to find you one now. I have a friend out near where we live. He's very industrious. I'll have him over to meet you. He'll make some girl a fine husband. Oh, really? Well, never mind. I'm not even going to like any men. I'd never think of marrying one. I wonder how girls can learn so much, even in a convent. So, the girl's been away for a long time, in a convent. Yes. Why was she in a convent? Well, she... But she's all right now. I'm sure she is. <laughs> There's always a reason for putting girls in convents especially when they have a good mother like Mrs. Saunders. Oh, I'm Carrie, why must you be like this? <laughs> why, like what, honey? I, I haven't said anything, have I? Not exactly. But you are hinting plenty, and I don't like it. Well, I'm sorry, Eva. But my mammy always taught me, when you found anybody cheating once, it was always wise to watch them after. That gal knows Jimmy's only her foster brother. She's staying out there at the farm to be near him. And feel as you pretend to about it, that girl don't mean you no good. Oh, that dance was wonderful. And Jimmy, he dances so easily, so beautifully. Bedtime already, isn't it? Well, yes. But I slept late this morning. I don't mind staying a little while longer. Perhaps even Carrie might like to go, but... No, no, little sister. We're all going. We've had a nice evening, and everybody's enjoyed themselves, I'm sure. Haven't you? So it's been moved and seconded that we go home. Oh, waiter. Check, please. I don't want to go now, Jimmy. I want to stay longer. Run along to bed and be a good little girl. I'll be around in time for breakfast in the morning. Kid, 
I feel so sorry for her. She'd been cooped up in a convent for ten long years. I know it must have been hard. It must have been. She'll need lots of attention. She will then. Jimmy. Yes, Naomi. If you weren't my brother. I want to see her very, very happy. Oh, thank you, Jimmy. But I was thinking. Yes, Naomi, you were thinking what? Oh, how nice it might be to be a farmer's wife. A nice, young, and successful farmer. Like you. I'm glad you think that way, Naomi. There's a farmer near me. Young and successful, too. I want you to meet him. You might... No, I'm not interested. You needn't bother. I'll have him come over to meet you. I have a feeling that he will like you. I said no, emphatically no. Mommy. Yes, dear? Has either been gone with Jimmy long? Ever since they were playmates, neither one of them has ever had another bowl. Is he very much in love with her? Oh, very much. She's his whole life. Why, Naomi? Oh, nothing. Well, if there's my good friend Clyde. My good friend Jimmy. Boy, I've been so busy that I couldn't come around. But I was here last week, and your mother told me you had gone to the city and took your sister, who is now back from school with you. Correct. We had a nice time, but we're back now, down to hard work again. I want you to meet my sister. She's a pretty girl. She'd have to be with a beautiful mother and a handsome brother. I'd be glad to meet her. Oh, Mama, look. Who is that with Jimmy? Oh, what makes him so funny looking? Shh. That's Clyde Wade, Jimmy's friend, who we want you to meet. You, you mean that? That's the man he's been talking about? Sure. And, and he wants me to like that? That person? Oh, Mama, I don't want anybody who looks like that. Oh, please, hide me somewhere, quick, please. Will you please hush? He might hear you. He's a nice fellow, an industrious. We want you to meet him and like him before you get mixed up with some good-looking, worthless Negro. Now hush. Oh, me. Oh, me. Then come on. <laughs> Man, you know I ain't fitting to meet no pretty girl. But, uh... Save your apologies. My sister's being trained in what to expect on the farm. Come on. Well, if you say so, I'm going. Mr. Wade, this is my sister Naomi. Naomi, Mr. Wade. You must excuse her, Clyde. She's been in the Catholic school all her life. She's not yet used to men. Glad to meet you, Miss Saunders. Your folks have told me so much about you, and I feel like I know you. Thank you. Uh, now that you've met, uh, let's go in the house for dinner. I hate to do it. It doesn't seem altogether fair to her. But as I see it, Naomi is still a dangerous problem to us. She hasn't changed. She's simply restrained. She's been taught restraint. And if we can get her off on Clyde, worships her already, and then get a family started. It's the only way, Jimmy. Of course, Clyde is so blinded by her beauty and that pretty color until he'd be her slave. Otherwise, he's crazy. And I'm not so sure she'll stay with him, even if we succeed in getting her married to him. It's better this way than to let her pick. She'd be sure to pick some worthless good look in the city, and they'd part in due time. She's too pretty to leave to her own fate. It's a risk marrying her off to Clyde, but since he's doubly anxious to have her, he couldn't blame us if it doesn't turn out all right. Mama! Oh, Jimmy! Oh, Jimmy, Jimmy, please, please! Please, Naomi, what do you mean, please? Please what? That man, that awful, ugly man. Oh, please send him away. I don't ever want to see him again. Please send him away, Jimmy. Now, now, darling, you mustn't be so foolish. Mr. Wade is a fine fellow, and everybody likes him. We want you to like him. Oh, I can't. I can't. He's so awfully ugly, too ugly. Oh, I'm afraid of him. Please, Jimmy, please, Mama, send him away. Naomi, my darling, I love you. I love you truly. I fell in love with you the moment I laid my eyes on you. Will you be mine, darling? I love you truly. Naomi, do you love me, dear? No, you ugly rascal. I do not. 
and I wouldn't marry you if you're the last man on earth. Be gone quickly, and never let me see that homely face of yours again. Did I hear a voice? Naomi's voice? Or am I just imagining things? No. I just imagined it. Listen, Jimmy, let's be perfectly frank with each other. Will you agree to try to be? Your friend Clyde has asked me to marry him, and I know you and Mother want me to accept. I don't love the man, never will, and I'm willing to tell him so, but I was a bad girl once and caused a lot of trouble, and realize now that things can't always be as I would like to have them. That is true, Naomi, they cannot. For that reason, I've decided to marry this man. But before I make this, this sublime sacrifice, for to marry a man I do not love is, to me, like committing suicide. Oh, don't make it that way, Naomi. You will make your mother and I... Unhappy. Yes, I know that. I caused you enough trouble years ago. I must sacrifice almost everything now to make amends. And I will. Before I do this, Jimmy, let us, as I started, be frank with each other. We are only foster brother and sister. You know that. And you know, too, Jimmy, that I love you. Love you dearly. You know that you would marry me if you were not pledged to Eva. Now, I am willing to give up all that would be dear and sweet to me to please you and our mother. I'm saying this for you to remember in the days to come. But wouldn't it be just as fair for you to sacrifice Eva and marry me and make me happy. I would be your slave until the end of time, Jimmy, and be happy in being your slave. But to do this, you would have to injure Eva, who is innocent. Either way it goes, one girl has got to suffer. I love you, Jimmy, and you love her, so I will be the one to suffer. I only wanted you to know how much I love you Crave you, worship you. Will you kiss me, Jimmy? And then I guess it will be goodbye. Poor kid. Naomi, you? What in heaven's name are you doing here? And with your baby? Let me have the baby, Naomi, so I can go put it on the bed. Come, darling. This is hot. Now, will you please explain what this is all about? I'm running away, Mother. I've left Clyde. You know I never loved a man, and I can stand it no longer. I've left him, and I'm leaving the Negro race. Oh, don't look at me like that. I've tried. Heaven knows I have. But I can't stand it any longer. My mind is made up, and I'm through. Yes, but Naomi, what about your baby? Surely you can't do this. I have done it, Mother. As to my baby, that is the hard part. Come, dear, and sit down. But your baby, Naomi. Your beautiful little boy. Surely... I have thought of all that, Mother. Do you suppose I don't love my child? Oh, God, forgive me. Forgive me. I understand, dear. You're just tired and upset. But you're still here, and you still have your baby. Just spend the night here with Mother, and then maybe tomorrow morning... I'm going on tonight, Mother. Please, don't try to stop me. I came to leave my baby with you. I know you will give it a mother's care. And if I ever decide to turn back, I'll know where to find it. But don't ask me to change my mind, for I won't. I'm going away from all I ever knew to the other side. And if I take my baby with me, 
I'll be branded. So you understand. Please try to forgive me. And don't hate me any more than you can help. You won't succeed on this fool's errand, Naomi. But I see your mind is made up. So I won't try to stop you. I tried so hard to save you from this. I did the best I could. But I failed. Now I can only say I'm sorry for you, Naomi. Sorry from the bottom of my heart. And I pray the Lord to try to forgive you and guide you on to God knows where. To God knows where, Mother. I know. On to God knows where. Doctor. Hello. How is she? It's here. You'll be a happy man, and your wife is safe. Thank heaven. And a little girl this time. Yes, you're a lucky man. A boy and now a fine little girl. Uh, the baby's in the nursery. Uh, I'll take you to your wife. Now this way, please. If you see me, you don't know me. Even if you pass me on the street, I am a stranger. You are a stranger. We are strangers who have never seen each other. Well, I know it's hard, but for me, it's the only way. One other is suicide. And I still want to live, Mother. I want to live. Yes? Mrs. Saunders speaking. Mother, this is Jimmy. Oh, it's you, Jimmy. How are you? Your voice sounds strange. Did something happen? Oh, Eva's all right. We're all happy. It's a little girl this time. Weighs eight pounds. Isn't that great? All right, Mother. I'll be home tomorrow. Be good. Goodbye. She's so good, your mother. Did she say anything about Naomi? Naomi? Why, no. I guess she's all right. She might even be calling to see how you are after a while. No, Jimmy. Naomi won't be calling. I have a feeling that something has happened to her. I talked with her several times before I came here. She's not satisfied and talks of strange things. Maybe you better call up Clyde. I dreamed of Naomi while under the ether. Please call up Clyde. Long distance? Garfield, 6055R. What? Oh, no. That's terrible. I'll see what I can do. I'll be at your place early tomorrow morning. Here? Yes, she's gone. I wonder if he did see someone out there. I'd better go and see. Yes, you better, Jimmy. I guess the child's mistaken. There's nobody around here. There was no one out there.
Yes, dear, I know you did. But nobody else saw her but you. So let's forget all about it and just pretend she wasn't there. You understand? All right, Grandma. Now can I go and play? Yes, dear, you can go and play. <laughs> 